they're um, they're actually bred to tolerate some of the herbicides, so we could use them too. But in all cases, we're getting this stress event from the herbicide, even on our GMO crops. And what we find is when you compare the herbicides versus hand weeded controls, which is it's for our experiment, that you have significant yield loss from even registered labeled herbicides. So the whole focus of today's webinar is to discuss that hidden yield loss, to bring it to your attention. Uh, we were actually able to calculate it. And then we were using a number of different products to evaluate and see which Stoller solution is really the best way to offset this yield loss and make sure that we preserve the genetic potential of our plants. So today, so that you don't, <clears throat> so that you don't have to listen to me you know, every week for hours and hours, um, we have a special guest. We have one of our scientists here from Stoller, Argentina, and uh, she's uh, her passion is in weed science and the use of our products to eliminate stress. So uh, this is a project that she put together, and uh, we're lucky enough to to have her here to be able to actually present it. So this is uh, quite an exciting day for our webinar series. Um, some nuts and bolts. I think I've seen a lot of you. I'm looking at the attendee list now. I've been uh, I've been traveling around the U.S. Uh, making making drop-ins to most of your locations, and I want to say thank you for having me, of course. And uh, just like the other webinars, this webinar series and and this hour today, uh, it is certified for CCA credits. So uh, when you put in the chat section, you just send us your name and your license number, and we'll handle all the paperwork so you get your CCA credit out of this. And then there's also question, question options. Now, uh, just for the sake of flow and to keep ourselves on time, instead of having live questions, what we'll do is we'll go in the chat bu button down there, and uh, we can actually ask the questions, and then that'll come to my desk. I can answer all the questions, and then I'll send them out to the attendee list so that we're all on the same page. So um, I think it's a little bit after 8.30 now, so we can get started. And I'd like to introduce you to our resident weed scientist, uh, Val uh, Valeria Selva. So without further ado, uh, Valeria. Hi, how are you? Hi, everybody. Good morning. Uh, first, I have to thank, uh, say thanks, uh, Robert. Uh, thanks, Madai, for helping me in all the, the staff here. And uh, it's very nice to be with you and have the opportunity to share one of our projects. Uh, tell me, I start, or do you think it's OK? Yes, please, go right ahead. Okay. So as Robert uh, said, um, my name is Valeria Selva. I work at the Market and Development Department of Stoller Argentina. And this presentation is based in one of our main projects, phytotoxicity recovery caused by herbicides. I'm thinking to change the name of the project for the one that Robert put uh, here in this slide that is uh, really nice. Uh, we are going to talk about the herbicides, um, the hidden yield loss, and what we can do to, to do for uh, increase that uh, yield loss. Okay. Let's go on. Uh, this is the, the different steps that we are going to follow during this presentation, just to put an order. I'm going to start with a little uh, introduction, basically just uh, to show you that this problem is not only for Argentina country, it's a problem that covers all the world. Basically the huge problem and start with the presence of resistant wheat, which in turn lead a big list of other issues. That is why we start working on this project here in Argentina. In this picture, you can see the worldwide resistance to ALS herbicides. Um, if you look at the scale here in this part, one to 48 
species that are a resistance to ALS herbicides in different countries. As you can see, the most countries around the world are being seriously affected by this problem. In this other picture, you can uh, see the worldwide panorama of the side of action that is include glyphosate resistance. The, um, in, our, um, in the world, there are a total of 32 species that are a resistance to glyphosate. In this picture, we can see that uh, up to 15 resistant species and the whole America, also you can see that the United States is really affected by this resistance. Okay, but it's uh, not the only uh, problem. With this uh, resistant weeds, um, uh, the, this problem in controlling weeds, push farmers to increase the number of applications, use higher doses, and mix herbicides in order to control them. And one of the consequences of those or application increases is more residues herbicides in soil that cause what you can see here in these pictures. These pictures are uh, from our trials. Um, you can see how, for example, 2,4-D affect growth in the seedlings or uh, metsulforone residual affect also the growth. But uh, the last problem that um, we decide to start working on this project is because the increasing of drift problem and also the phytotoxicity caused by a dirty tank. We think that soybean resistance to 2,4-D and dicamba, the new, the new genetic from Monsanto and Dow, will uh, increase this problem, but maybe you can tell me that because I think you already have this genetic on United States. Okay, actually, uh, here you have a picture that you can see the damage of uh, dicamba drift in this case, and um, the plot affected by dicamba drift. Here is cotton with 2,4-D uh, drift, and tobacco with uh, glyphosate drift. But actually we are a company focused on physiology and plant nutrition. We shouldn't care about resistant weeds. The underlying problem is that such an issue leads a whole world of other issues that end up affecting crops and the economic results for farmers. And it is here where the scholar is interesting and where our work is based. Okay, let's go uh, to the objective. Why we start working on this project? First, we want to know how much farmer lose because of phytotoxicity. In the case of Argentina, we don't have much information on the amount of the loss. That is why we want to translate uh, this parameter into numbers. Second, we want to find out which stellar solution is the best to solve this problem. And last but not least, uh, we want to know how much yield increases with the stellar solution selected. Uh, we work with a network of trial in Argentina in the core area of extensive crops. We work in corn and in soybean with different uh, consultants here. Here you have the different herbicides we test in corn and soybean. In some cases, we wanted to simulate a residual herbicides problem with a pre-emerging herbicide, drift problem with post-emerging herbicides, and some crops uh, herbicides, which although are recommended, end up affecting yield due to their high energetic cost of metabolizing. These are the stellar products that we came up with since we consider they could be the more successful at solving phytotoxicity issues and allow plants to metabolize the herbicide faster and reduce damage. As you know, Stimulate is a growth regulator, so we apply it to test the enhancement of affected plants, and Bioforge is an antioxidant that may succeed at reducing damage on plants. Okay, in order to 
evaluate bioregulators' effect, that is, stimulate a specifically um, BioForge effect on herbicide phytotoxicity, we have worked on plots with seed treatment, as you can see, at laboratory and also in field, in order to evaluate uh, residual herbicides. On the other hand, uh, we apply foliar treatment seven days after seeing the symptoms. We consider seven days because um, we have a delay between the farmer call and uh, tell us about the problem and the product uh, arrives uh, to the field. In this way, with all these uh, applications, we cover all the usage alternatives that farmers have regarding phytotoxicity, not only caused by residual herbicides, but also by, by post-emergent herbicides. So now, we are going to focus first on foliar treatment, um, seven days after uh, seeing the symptoms. Uh, it is uh, the first part of the project. In this year, in this season, we are now in the harvest time here in Argentina, and we are, um, we are going to get the results of the seed treatments in this new season. Let's start with the results uh, in uh, corn. This first table um, presents basically the effect of herbicides without the stoller foliar products. We test here, as you can see, pre-emerging and post-emerging herbicides. And we test, uh, we test each herbicide in two doses. As you can see here, dicamba L, post-emergent, and dicamba high, post-emergent. The L means low dose, and dicamba H means high dose. That is uh, because we wanted to simulate a high or a mild or extreme or a mild phytotoxicity. So that is why you will see uh, two dicambas uh, post-emergent, for example. So the weather conditions in these plots for us were excellent. You, here you have the, um, the yield of the healthy control without herbicide phytotoxicity or without herbicide application. In this case, we control the weeds by hand or by the application of glyphosate herbicide. Uh, I know that I put all my numbers in kilograms per hectare. Please uh, forgive me for that, but I have a calculator here inside me. So 13,000 kilograms per hectare is around uh, 206 bushels per hectare. So this is a healthy control without phytotoxicity, and um, under this control you have um, uh, the, the yield loss because of herbicide phytotoxicity without the stellar product application. If you remember, this was our first objective, to know how much we lose because of phytotoxicity. In the red part of the table, we can see the yields that show significant differences with the healthy control. You can note here that yields vary from 7% here with mesulfuron and to 35% here with foam siphon. Uh, that losses are between, let me see, 1,000 kilograms means um, around 50, uh, 15 bushels per acre of, of, of yield loss. Okay, um, this kind of product, sorry, like metzolforon on foam siphon here in Argentina are, uh, are normally applied during the fallow period in order to control weights. So, Let's go on with this other table. I know that it's a big table with a lot of numbers, but I'm going to explain for you. This is a decision matrix for corn. I, found, I find this uh, table very interesting because it helps us um, to take the right decision. On the top of the table here, the highlighted area, you can find the stellar product that we test. Um, 
you can see uh, here that there are much more products tested than the one I showed you at the beginning of the presentation. The reason is that the, the project is a huge project, um, but for the delivery, uh, um, for the, the short time that I have for this presentation, I simplified and select the best results uh, so you have the opportunity to see uh, the most part of the project. Here in this column, you can find the different herbicides uh, we test. The percentages drawn on the middle of the table uh, were calculated by taking this healthy control as a representative 100%. So the first row, this row, show us uh, the um, response of stellar products on healthy plots without herbicides um, residues or without the red herbicide application. This uh, column, the, the second column, show us the losses caused by herbicide phytotoxicity without the stellar products application. Then, in the middle of the table, you find the different combinations. So what means the different colors for you? Uh, red and orange uh, describe significant yield losses or poor responses. And then green color, uh, the different green color you can see there, show us the low phytotoxicity or positive response to a starter product. So the most harmful herbicide in, in this season were diclosulam, imacesophir, and foam safen in the different doses. Sorry if, if I don't uh, pronounce uh, very good the names of the herbicides. I don't know uh, very good that kind of words, specific words in English. So... I, I don't think too many people can pronounce the herbicides. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> So, uh, as you can see, there, this one, uh, the most harmful herbicides. And if we have to get uh, our first general conclusion, we can see that these two products, as Bioforge and Stimulate, were the best at solving problems of uh, phytotoxicity. Remember here that we are talking about foliar application of Bioforge or Stimulate applied seven days after we see the symptoms. So, in this case, I put an example of this table that in a low or in a high dose of imacesophir, together with Bioforge, these two boxes are for Bioforge, allows us to recover between 10 to 20 percent of the yield loss I think it's a really great number for us when we have this kind of problem. So, in some cases, uh, in this table, you're going to see that the number is uh, up uh, more than 100%, for example, this or 109%. That means that uh, the treatment uh, wins over phytotoxicity, but also improves the control value. So it's important if you receive a call or if you receive um, uh, a call of a farmer or a client uh, telling you that you have a problem with a herbicide, you can come here to this table and find the, uh, the, the best solution for you. That is why I think it's a really nice table for, for us. In order to show you the results more clearly, I decide to group the different herbicides um, by the side of action. So I also include some pictures of phytotoxicity and the growth effect of stellar enhancers. So we can start here with ALS herbicides. In this mode of action, um, you can see that stimulate has a great response in recovering phytotoxicity caused by ALS herbicide. You have to know that here you have the healthy control. The ALS control, it means that it, this control is only with the herbicide application. And these two bars means uh, the, the treatments that receive the herbicide application also receive the foliar 
stellar product application. So this 9% or this 11% is in relation with this control affected by the herbicide. So here you can see that Bioforge and Stimulate were uh, very good at solving phytotoxicity problem. In this case, we can see a picture about a chlorimuron uh, residue. Um, you can note how root system is affected in this case. These plants cannot uh, uptake water and nutrients in the same, in the same way that, that this one. Uh, this is a metsulfuron residue. Note in this picture that you can see this is the healthy control and this is affected by metsulfuron residue. You can know that it's not a uniform crop. There are fewer plants and they have less color than the control. In this one, you can see how, uh, let me explain this. This is the healthy control. This is the control affected by herbicide without the stellar products. And these two plants are treated with foliar application with stimuli and with bioforge. In this case, uh, in particular with mesulfuron residue, a stimulate recovered 12% of the yield loss. Um, and mesulfuron reduced the yield in a 7%. Here we have diclotulam. Uh, note here that twisted and yellow leaves. Uh, here you can see in this another picture the effect of uh, stimulate in foliar application. We took more than one plant here because when we start uh, walking inside the crop, we find that uh, the crop was very was not uniform. So we've, we took a, a better plant, if, you, if we can say better, and a worse plant. And you can see that they have uh, shorter internodes. And this plant is, uh, looks uh, very well, um, and this is the healthy control. So again, you can see that it stimulates, uh, has a great response in recovering uh, phytotoxicity caused by herbicides. So, uh, this is imatesophere. Um, you can see how the root system is really, really harmed here. Uh, the foliar area also is um, damaged. Here we can see the comparison between treatments. Uh, Stimuli has a great response recovering the growth. And, um, if we change our side of action, we are now are in PPO herbicides. In this case, we just analyzed Fonsafen in two doses. Here on your left, you can see a picture in how Fonsafen affects the foliar area of seedlings. And here you can see the magnitude of the yield loss due to the PPO herbicide, in this case, uh, Fonsafen. Look please on Bioforge or Stimulate, 38 or 36 percent of recovery. It's a great result um, for these uh, products, and it's a great number of recover for us. Uh, this product is um, is normally applied here in, in Argentina during the fallow period to in order to control Amaranthus palmieri. I don't know if you have that kind of problem in United States. So uh, here is the last side of action, um, synthetic auxins. As you know, here we include auxins, uh, 2,4-D, sorry, and they came a herbicide. Here, this herbicide didn't affect uh, the yield or the crop too much because, you know, you can see here that 3% uh, of reduce of the yield is not uh, too much, but you can check that Bioforge and Stimulate has a, a great performance uh, in increasing yield in this crop. So you can know that not only in uh, bad moments or in bad situations or unfavorable situations, uh, the products are working. Also, they are working and doing uh, a great job in the in a normal situations of the crop. So. Uh, to go um, in a 
in a part of the discussion. Um, here you have a graph that I include. You remember that uh, decision matrix, that table with a lot of numbers. I put all that numbers here in this graph. Um, in the x-axis, you can find the loss kilograms, uh, the loss of yield due to the phytotoxicity, the kilograms loss due to phytotoxicity. And in the y-axis, you can find the kilograms recovered due to the starter products. So, uh, what we can read here, why uh, this graph is interesting for me, because it says that it's possible to recover 80 kilograms per 100 kilograms loss with the application of stellar products. And um, uh, it's a really good number. So, until now, uh, we can say that we can find, uh, we uh, have met the three objectives of our project. Now we know how much we lose because of herbicide phytotoxicity, then we know uh, what the best storage solution is for corn, and actually we know how much we recover with the storage solution selected. I know that it's, uh, it's out of program, this part, because Robert don't know about this. Uh, I'm going to present just um, a few pictures and a short video about our new results that we have with the seed treatment. We are uh, testing seed treatment uh, with, um, in order to know uh, uh, how they, um, uh, they uh, respond uh, in in front of a uh, herbicide uh, residue. And we want to know if we can consider these kind of products in seed treatment as um, sowing insurance. So, I'm going to sh uh, show you a short video. I hope you can uh, see it uh, in a good way. The idea is to show you uh, a short uh, test that we uh, did in the laboratory of Stoller Argentina, which is our dosing, normal conditions without herbicide resin, uh, foliar area and root. Here you can see what is stimulated also in and root growth. And we measure the number of plants in the time they under with normal conditions, improve uh, the merge. That's it, uh, we include, and this one, no, taller. Okay, this is, uh, we are proud of that. Uh, and also we in a nursery with a well-known referent on wheat. Uh, here we made a, a dose curve of many herbicides and in many crops at nursery. So just to show you just a little part of this project or uh, of this uh, trial, I put just one picture because we are out of time, uh, but here, these two first plants, you can find the seed treatment with Biofort or Stimulate without herbicide residue, and here you can find the Biofort and Stimulate seed treatment with uh, herbicide residue in pots. And this plant, what you can see, that you can see here, is the plant that didn't receive uh, the seed treatment is just with the highest uh, dose of herbicide residue. So here again we can check how these two products improve uh, growth, uh, uh, root growth, sorry, and the area part of the plant. So just uh, pictures about the seed treatment in field. Uh, here you can see um, the, the general view, and it's uh, easy to see the difference, uh, the difference in height among the treatments. You can see this is the control without seed treatments, and here you start the seed treatment. You can find the, the height differences. If we took some plants uh, from the field, we can see that metulfurin residue um, really harmed uh, the plants and uh, how stimulate and um, bioforge at seed treatments helps to recover the phytotoxicity. 
In this case, you have the clostridium, uh, the same as metsulfuron, this herbicide delays crop growth dramatically. In this case, you have imatesafir, it's less aggressive than the other herbicides, but although you can see uh, the great job of stimulate and bioforge at seed treatment. Uh, here you have chlorimuron, uh, cause great damage. Even though this herbicide is highly problematic, you can see how the effect of uh, the promoter effect of stimulate and bioforge. And uh, in this case, uh, you have foam safen. Uh, regarding foam safen, everything we have seen is described uh, in the same way uh, for this herbicide. So, until now, we can say that for corn, all herbicides treatments reduce growth and yield. Loss due to herbicides ranges from 4 to 35 percent. Um, Bioforge and Stimulate achieve significant recoveries in all herbicide treatments. So now we can go on with uh, the results on soybean. This chart is the same as we uh, have seen in uh, corn. So all the explanations I uh, already uh, done uh, are, are good for this table. Regarding um, uh, this table, uh, you can see here you, we have the healthy control. Uh, let me see how much uh, it means. Um, it means 75 bushels per acre. Remember, uh, these crops are without irrigation. So this is the healthy control without um, foliar products application. Under this control, we can see the yield loss because of herbicide phytotoxicity in the red part. We can see the yields that show us significant differences with the healthy control. You can note here that the biggest yield loss is due to metolachlor that is around 31% of yield loss. Um, although uh, dikemba, for example, here, uh, dikemba um, post-emerging has no significant differences, 8 or 9% here means in this case, let me see, uh, means 6 bushels per acre less in, in our yield. Uh, this is a normal problem in Argentina where uh, corn is near soybean. So we consider it uh, like a, a little bit important for us, uh, this amount of yield. So similar to corn, we made a, a decision matrix for soybean. Um, in this particular case of soybean, the most harmful herbicides were 2,4-D and clarimuron. You can note here how the herbicide reduced yield in the percentage. So if we make our general conclusions for soybean, we can say that Bioforge was the best, the best of all recovering um, phytotoxicity caused by herbicide. herbicide. You can see all the box in uh, green. That is great <laughs> for us. So um, now we are going to group the different herbicides uh, for the side of action. Uh, in this case, we can find um, dikemba and 2,4-D in application, in pre-emergent application, and also in post-emergent applications. So you can find uh, how much these herbicides reduce yield and how much stimulate and bioforge improve yield. Bioforge is the best option for applications in soybean plots affected by instance of phytotoxicity. In this case, yield increase was uh, around 24% with respect to the plot affected by the herbicide, with respect with this. Um, as you can see in this uh, graph, the response of Bioforge even is much higher than the absolute control. 
with no herbicide phytotoxicity. So in this picture, we can see the effect of dicamba pre-emergent uh, phytotoxicity. Please check how the seedling uh, is really affected by this. In this case, we can see the effect of uh, dicamba phytotoxicity, but uh, post-emergent dicamba. Here you have the healthy control, the control affected by dicamba, and here the plants affected by dicamba, but these plants receive the foliar application of stellar products. Uh, from these plots, you can see here how uh, the amazing work of these products in recovering uh, this herbicide periodicity. In this plot, we decide to took an old leaf and a young leaf from each of one of these treatments. And you have here, this old leaf and this another didn't receive the foliar application of a starter product. This new young leaf uh, received the stoller product, and this one, no. You can see here that this uh, plant doesn't have uh, or metabolize the herbicide faster, and these uh, leaves uh, still has the uh, herbicide damage. They couldn't metabolize the herbicide. So we can conclude that biofortor stimulate are helping plants to metabolize the herbicide faster, reduce damage, and continue with uh, the, the, the growth. In, he, in this case, we can see a traveling herbicide. Uh, yeah, um, you can note how atrazine uh, reduced yield and how, again, Bioforge uh, increased yield here in a 14%. Uh, also uh, improved the yield of a healthy control. Oh, this picture is amazing for me. Here you have the healthy control, the, the control affected by the herbicide, and these plants were treated, uh, were affected by the herbicide, but also treated with the stellar products. If we uh, take a detail of the picture with the Bioforge application, we can see the differences between them in uh, the number, in the pot number, sorry. So, uh, for claromuron, uh, here we can see that these uh, herbicides really affect yield in soybean, 23% of yield reduction, and this number is amazing. 42% of uh, increase uh, yield uh, with the application of Bioforge. Uh, here we have foam safer in post-emergent application. Uh, this product in soybean uh, actually is recommended for soybean. It's a selective herbicide for soybean. This herbicide, um, you can see that really affects the, the yield on soybean. And we can note how Bioforge improves yield in this case. This herbicide, as I told you, is um, normally applied here to control Amaranthus palmieri inside soybeans crops. Again, this graph, um, as the same in corn, I put all the results here to make this graph. Remember that here you can find or you can read the kilograms loss due to herbicide phytotoxicity are here the stellar response or the kilogram recovered due to stellar products. For 100 uh, kilograms loss, uh, 100 kilograms loss, uh, let me see, uh, it's um, one and a half uh, bushels per acre. Uh, it is possible to recover maybe uh, one um, almost more than one bushel per acre with the application of stellar products, 90 kilograms per hectare for us. So we can conclude that, again, herbicides produce a marked yield reduction in soybean, as in corn. Depending on the herbicide yield, drop reach up to 30%. 
And I have to say that Bioforge uh, was the best in recovering uh, the phytotoxicity caused by herbicides in foliar applications. So I know that we are, um, we don't have uh, too much time, but we are going to have a quick look at some commercial plots that I picked to amplify everything we have discussed during these presentations. They were real farmers uh, with real problems, and Sturer was able to give them uh, real solutions. So here, I, I don't think you have too much rice in the United States, but uh, I think the example is great to note uh, that uh, deer titan with imaceta fear caused what you can see here. And this was the effect of imaceta fear uh, in the crop. And they stop growth. And uh, here we can uh, check how stimulate and bioforge uh, uh, recover the crop. This image is it's really great. Uh, here uh, we have a detail of the plants that were treated with these two products. And with bioforge, we get 500 kilograms and more per hectare. That means, let me see, uh, means um, seven, no, eight bushels per acre uh, more than uh, uh, comparing with the control that was affected by imacetafir uh, herbicide. So here we have an example of dicamba drift. You can know that the corn was there, but the herbicide was applied here, I think. <laughs> but um, here we apply the stimulate plus, plus mastermind plus. And the interesting thing here that the, the drift reduced the yield in, um, let me see, uh, reduced the yield in 23 or 24 bushels per acre and with the stimulate plus mastermind plus we increase the half of the yield loss. We increase um, 10 bushels per acre of the yield loss. This is the healthy control. This received the application of stimulate and this one were affected by the drift or or the, of dicamba herbicide. And to finish, the last example, tobacco. This is glyphosate drift. In this case, um, the application of Bioforge resulted not only in a 45% more plants alive, but also in a foliage increase. Each plant developed two more leaves, and so they improved yield with this. Uh, that, uh, this was amazing also. So, I finish. Uh, thanks uh, for your attention. This is part of the team that uh, works here in Argentina. There is Robert, also work here sometimes and help us with a lot of things. Um, they uh, help us and we work all together to achieve these uh, great results. And, uh, please, I'm here to, to answer the questions. Um, you know that this project is very big, so we have a lot of other results that I couldn't show here in this short time. But I'm here to help and to share my, my experience. And please, if you have also results of this kind of things, uh, send me, because for us it's very interesting uh, to know about this. You have to remember that uh, the herbicide phytotoxicity uh, is um, highly related with the type of soil or weather conditions. So you have to know that these kind of results were in a specific uh, campaign or season and in a specific uh, soil situation. So thank you very much for your attention. Robert, it's all yours. Hey, thank you so much, Valeria. That was a great presentation, and you put it together so well. I love the videos and the pictures. Um, with pictures like that, you really don't have to describe them. Uh, it's amazing what a little bit of solar technology can do. 
in terms of uh, promoting the crop health and alleviating the stress that we see in the field. For our, our Argentines that are on the list here, I'm looking at the attendance. I think Thomas taught me this one. Uh, Las fotos, ha blonde, por se mis mis. Yeah. So, You're uh, right. <laughs> the pictures speak from themselves. <laughs> it's very, it's very true. But so I'm seeing here from the applied sense, just looking back, um, this is a giant project looking at all crops, all stolen products, and uh, as many herbicides as we can get our hands on. So for those of you out there that want to get more information, we have it. Just shoot us an email or, or put it into the chat. Um, but here I know the one thing, we're looking at the soybean field and uh, we prevented about a six bushel to the acre uh, yield loss. Well, at this morning's spot price, you know, that's over 65 bucks. So that's a significant amount of money when you compare it on a, a five, a 10,000 acre field. So this is a big deal for the farmers. Uh, you know, I want everyone here to take responsibility. It's it's really our job to teach the farmers what, you know, what's going on in those fields. And uh, we're not doing our jobs if we let our farmers take a, a hundred dollar an acre hit from a herbicide application. So as a preventative, let's just tank mix uh, Bioforge or Stimulate, depending on the herbicide, right there with the herbicide. Then we could stop this drift issue. We won't see any burnt beans. And then if not, if we're coming back later, if we're getting those emergency calls, then what you're going to have is we have these decision matrices. So that's the, uh, the traffic light style Excel chart where the red, green, and yellow. So we're able to take that specifically for corn or specifically for bean, and we can look at it and say, okay, we had this application. The best solution for our grower is going to be this product. And we have the data to back that up. And, and these charts, you're welcome to all of them. So I, I'd like you to use this presentation as tools in your own consulting and, and agronomy practices. So another thing I'd like to point out in terms of weed control, uh, these plants, the system of selectivity is so large that uh, we are increasing crop health, but we're not decreasing the actual weed control. So you don't have to worry about... Uh, herbicide failures where the weeds take over the field. So that's a really good thing. So I don't know, just to sum, to sum up this whole thing, you know, many of the tools that we really can't live without, like herbicides, for instance, you know, they're costing the farmer yield. This is what we mean by the highest your yield will ever be is when you open that bag of seed. As soon as you put that little baby in the ground, Every day, you're going to lose a little bit of yield. So it's not about increasing crop yields. It's our job to prevent the loss of the yield and ultimately to maximize the genetic expression of those plants. So from this, I mean a takeaway point. It's really important for you to protect yourselves, your farmers, your crops from these unforeseen yield loss events that we all live with. And we can do that with uh, proper use of solar technology. So to sum everything up then, I want to remind you, uh, while the dialogue is still going on, shoot me over your CCA numbers so we can get you your, your one hour of credits. And then uh, in terms of questions, we'll go forward with that in, in an email chain. So everyone on the list that listened to this presentation can now have a, a written record of the questions and the answers. So I want to thank everyone for coming. Uh, two weeks, we're having another webinar. And um, until then, hey, good luck out there. Uh, a lot of the Midwest is starting to dry out. Uh, the rains seem to have subsided yesterday. So hopefully we get some sun and heat so we could start uh, drilling some beans into the ground. So without further ado, I want to thank you again, Valeria. Amazing presentation. Uh, I know here at Stoller USA, we're really excited by um, the, the level and the line of research that you're going in. So keep us posted with any new discoveries, and we'll disseminate it to the world. So okay. uh, until next time, thank you very much. Bye. Bye-bye.